If you have a question during the show, we want to hear your input is a big part of what makes this show successful. We thrive on your energies and insights. Whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion you just have to share, um, don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. And if you, want to if you want to make absolutely sure your message stands out and gets featured on the show, there's an easy way to do that. Use the super chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your super chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air, and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love, and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit that super chat button, and let's keep this show as interactive and exciting as possible. And if you prefer, you can also go to the gsmcpodcast.net to tip donate and leave a comment or question there we couldn't do what we do without your amazing support and we're so thankful to have you as part of our community we start off with brazil we touched on this yesterday when we did a little bit of a quick roundup of conmebol world cup qualifiers yesterday some fabulous uh matches argentina messi Five goal contribution, 6 0 1 over Bolivia. Paraguay, big win over Venezuela. Uruguay continued to drop points yet again as they, um, as they drew with Ecuador. Um, Colombia bounced back with a good win over Chile. And um, is there a game I'm missing? And then, yeah, obviously, Brazil got a 4 0 win over Peru. Um, Rafinha got on the score sheet, scored two, took advantage of two penalties. Overall played a really good game, though. I think, you know, he did deserve a goal from the performance. I thought he got much more involved. Um, I thought Rodrigo got more involved in play, playing off that left-hand side for Brazil, um, which is naturally his best position, but a position that he, he never really gets to play, not only at the club level, but also at the international level because of Vinicius and Vinicius, you know, locking up that left tail side. But look, actually, we'll get to that. But yes, um, so Ravinia, he opened up the score sheet on the score sheet with converting the penalty to make it 1 0. Then opening up the second half in the 54th minute, scored that second to make it 2 0. Um, I think um, Brazil in that first half was. A little bit shaky, didn't really dominate the game, but in that second half, once they got that second goal, the confidence grew, they got numbers more more forward, they looked more creative, they looked more dynamic, they looked more in control, uh, I mean, they really looked like a high-flying side in that second half. We got individual performances that we have not seen from players like Igor Jesus, um, Rafinha, Rodrigo, um, Andres Pereira scoring a wonderful goal as well. Luis Enrique making an impact. That's you know that's what we want to see. We want to see the individuals for Brazil show the quality that they have. Cause at the end of the day, this is a weaker Brazilian national team in terms of the talent pool, especially in that midfield area. But they're still quality, and they should still be much better than the Perus, the Chiles, uh, and. And Brazil, you know, it was a long way from perfect, but it was a good way to get on the right track with Neymar coming back potentially for the next month when they take on Uruguay and Colombia, two teams that are sitting above them right now in the standings. It's a good opportunity now for Brazil to use this momentum because they did get six points from six and carry this forward. Um, I thought... You know, I thought some Brazil players in this game put themselves in a good... I thought Savio played a really good game. Rafinha, you know, he was not as dominant in that Chile game as what we've seen from in that uh, as what we've seen from him in Barcelona. But in this game, I thought he looked really favorable. Uh, Igor Jesus, I thought he looked lively. Uh, Luis Enrique, he made an impact off the bench. Uh, I thought Rodrigo played a solid game as well. I thought he got more involved as the game went on. As the confidence grew from the team. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I'm happy with the, 
with the second half performance i do have to say the first half was a little bit of a dud and the crowd they didn't it wasn't really as electrified as i expected this to be with this being a really important game for brazil in this world cup qualifying uh, campaign but uh but in that second half i thought the crowd grew into the game i thought brazil took advantage of the energy and yeah brazil you know dominated a team that they're supposed to dominate and we should have seen that against Chile as well. Even going away, this is a Chile team that's sitting bottom of the Comebol World Cup qualifiers, and I was really, really, really disappointed with the performance. But at the end of the day, they ended up managing to get the result with the winning goal from um, from Igor um, Igor Jesus or Igor Jesus. Uh, no. Igor Jesus scored the equalizer. It was Luis Enrique that got the winning goal. They were able to get the winning goal in a game that they were pretty lackluster in. And then they took advantage of this. So at the end of the day, not the most dominant of two games, but six points from six is always a successful window. Um, it'll, you know, Especially when you look at the vulnerable position that Brazil found themselves in. Entering these games, they needed the six points. They um they needed something to you know allow them to catapult themselves going forward with some momentum, with some spirit, um, and to increase the the chances that they have of building this dominant team that they want to build ahead of the World Cup, so they can you know so they can go for that trophy. Because always the expectation you're you know if you're for the brazilian national team the expectation of any competition you're in is to win it you know there's no oh we just need to you know you know we just need to excite the fans play good football no always the expectation is not, and in fact sometimes as a brazilian national team you know when it comes to the brazilian national team sometimes winning it winning the trophy is not even enough you have to win the trophy in a convincing way in a in an attractive way of in an attractive style of football, sometimes even winning it is not even enough. You have to win it with a with a dominance and an attractive style of play, which is almost just as not just as important as winning it, but has a massive, massive importance. Because you know, there's Brazilians that can that watch a dull game, that see them get a result, and if it's in a dull game, if it's a dull final, they say that. That's unacceptable. This is not the Brazil that we need. We should accept. That's the high, high standards that comes from, you know, putting on that badge, representing the Salasau. So, I definitely think this game can be something, can be something that builds momentum going forward. When you look at the fact that, you know, that second half, there's a lot of things, a lot of positive aspects of it. Getting six points from six in this window. Potentially getting the likes of Neymar back. You will be getting the likes of Vinicius back as well. I think that will allow them to have a turnaround. I think Dorvial Jr. is getting more and more and more in the cusp of this team as well. I thought, you know, he needed just a little bit more time after this poor Copa America that they had in the summer. And he's getting, he's gotten that time now. Now, you know, now all the pressure is on. The expectation is heavy. Next international window, they need to be massive, massive improvement. They need to go and they need to compete, not just compete with Colombia and Uruguay. They need to beat Colombia and Uruguay because that is the expectation of you are the Brazilian national team. Now, something I do want to say, I think, you know, if you see the continuous performances of Savio, of Igor Jesus, of Luis Enrique, um, you know, if Rafinha can show us the form that he showed from the Bar- from Barcelona and he continues it here. So you can see Rodrigo. I believe Rodrigo playing on the left-hand side today. This is almost an audition for him because this is not Real Madrid. If this was Real Madrid, Rodrigo almost has no chance of playing on the left-hand side because Vinicius, he just plays absolutely amazing football for Real Madrid. But Brazil Vinicius is two different players. I think these players have an opportunity right now. And Vinicius, I don't think Vinicius has done enough in the Brazil kit that his spot on the in the starting 11 or on that left-hand side in his strong position should be something that's locked up for him. 
because he, he's not good enough. He's not. He has not been at the level of a Brazilian national team player, of a Brazilian national team talisman when he puts on that jersey. So I do think these other players should have an opportunity to win that role. And if Rodrigo, if he plays his best football for Brazil on the left-hand side, and he's shown to be more effective on the left-hand side than Vinicius, what, what are we waiting? What, why are we, you know, why are they gift wrapping Vinicius the left hand side when he has not, you know, when he has not earned the right to be considered a lock at that position? I really think Vinicius' position in this national team should be something that, sh you know, should be up for grabs because he has not done enough with his appearances for the national team, with the goal contributions he's got in the national team. It has not been at a high enough level for him to be locked into that left-hand side. So I definitely think that is a conversation that we, um, that not we, because I'm not involved, I'm just a fan, but the Brazilian national team, Dorvel Jr. Um, and the coaching staff need to, need to, you know, discuss, because I definitely think Vinicius is not a, shouldn't be some lockdown, starting 11, playing on the left-hand side, 100% no matter what type of deal because the performances, you know, at Real Madrid, he could do that because, you know, he's that, you know, that's important, you know, that's necessary at Real Madrid because of how dominant he is at Real Madrid, but he is not that same player at Brazil. That's just the flat out truth.